just like that it's friday okay finally fucking friday let me see the ones caramel mocha always got her finger on the one what what's going on lisa t merlo is here dominique mitchell's here hey yolanda i'm just noticing your name if you're new welcome to the building what's going on dizzy cow and you will see your comment up here at some point everybody in the building happy friday everybody kyra's out traveling Ebony's chilling. She's on chill mode. And Snapple, she has some plans tonight. So had to shout out to Snapple. Have fun, girl. Be safe. Put your hands on 10 and 2. Don't drink and drive. And I'll see you when you get back. <laughs> Ladies, there's some stuff, right, that I always talk to Black women about. We kind of have chill, laid back conversations in Discord. And sometimes they get a little heated and that type of shit because it's a, it's, I like to liken it to, a living room for divested women, right? All types of black women back there. We'd be back there talking about everything from travel to uh, getting ready for some catastrophe to happen. We talk about everything back there. We gossip back there and it's, it's a lounge area. Pull up. Well, I've talked to the ladies before about social media, okay? Social media is relatively new to an old bitch like me. It's, it's new, okay? It's some people here tonight that they don't know a world without social media. It's always been there. Here's the deal. Did you know that this social, these social media platforms, they belong to white people? I'm trying to see something. I'm trying to see something. 
I'm looking down in the chat. Did you know, right, that these platforms belong to white people? Did you know that black people didn't build anything? Did you know when they want you to get the fuck up off of them, you will? Did you know that you don't have no say so when it comes to it? Oh, baby, you can talk all you want to. You can talk all you want to. But when they say time's up, time's up. Why? Because they won. It is what it is. But let me go ahead and share my screen real quick because some people don't think fat meat is greasy, right? They don't think anything could happen. Sometimes we've been called fear mongers and all types of shit over here. But rarely, if ever, anything that we said was going to happen, and it happened. Let's just keep it tall. I'm not trying to pop no collars, right? I'm trying to pop you out that Blackistani bubble. But we talked about social media before behind the wall, okay? And the news is saying that the House went on ahead and passed a bill that would ban TikTok over here, okay? It would ban TikTok over here. Y'all, these are these people shit, okay? Whenever they want it to go, it will go, all right? Nothing is stable that you didn't create. And it depends on who you let around you, whether the shit you created is going to be stable, okay? There's a lot of black women that depend on social media for a lot of their shit. That should be a backup plan unless you've made millions. Everybody, like I've said in Discord, cannot be, quote unquote, a goddamn influencer. There's work at the post office. Have something, a plan A, a plan B, all the way through Q if you need to. But you never need to be out on your ass if people that own some shit decide no more. No more. You can protest. You can riot. You can loot. You can do all that shit. But at the end of the day, Whatever Zaddy say is going to happen, that's what the fuck is going to happen, whore. So check it, right? I want y'all to see something real quick because this tickled me a little bit. Let's go. I use my palette today. When I got on TikTok in 2022, it changed my life forever. I was able to gain followers. I was able to connect with my community. Um, I was able to grow my business and upscale to a warehouse of 15,000 square feet, get a brick and mortar into the mall location. It changed my life forever. I have people flying in from California, the UK, Seattle, New York, just to visit my store just because they heard about me from TikTok. Could you ever vote for one of these members of Congress if they do vote for this ban? If you vote for this ban, you are voting against my First Amendment and my way of freedom of speech. You are voting against my small business. You are voting against me getting a slice of my American pie. So I will have to, this will highly influence who I vote for, especially in November. In the Senate, yes, TikTok is that important to me. Ladies, this is the deal. Did you hear her get extra deep? It goes into my freedom of speech. I'm trying to see something about that palette you was just putting up there. That's part of your freedom of speech. That lets me know that you don't have nothing to say, motherfucker. That's part of your, so you can sell big booty clothes, huh? Big back clothes. This is the thing. You need to operate as if the electrical grid will go out one day. Don't you never in your fucking life depend on somebody else's shit to, to sustain you. I'm just trying to give you some big girl panties. Pull your big girl panties up and stop with the bullshit. So before TikTok, you didn't have freedom of speech. I'm trying to see something. This is the thing. When we talk like this, okay, people know that we have no idea what's going on politically. Huh? Information was flying across state lines way before YouTube, social media, all that good shit. So those Fortune 500 companies that y'all know about, they didn't get popular on TikTok. I'm trying to see something. Let me look at this chat. Okay, because we we some real goofballs around here. Then she threatened to keep her vote away. Ma'am, nobody gives a fuck about your vote. Why do you think those borders are open? You're being replaced, like we said before. All this liberal nonsense is making it to where your vote doesn't matter. They want you to take your vote and put it on your big back. Huh? They don't give a solid fuck. Make sure you ladies have something to sustain yourself if the entire electrical grid goes out. Have some shit that's put the fuck up. I told the ladies in Discord, get you some solar panels that, and, and, and all that good shit. Solar power generators. Now we Look, we ready over here. They can knock this whole motherfucker out on, on some warfare shit and, and we good. We're going to eat tonight. Okay? 
but it is what it is. But I got a question for you because I got a little curious, right? You're threatening. They're usually idle threats, right? But I remember three years ago, three years ago in 2021, you motherfuckers, you threatened to leave TikTok. Your boycotts ain't working. Damn near 100% of the things and items and LLCs and people that black people have boycotted are still here. And you're sitting here issuing idle threats. I think you need to move around. You need to make up your mind. Do you want it or do you? If you keep it real, if you go ahead and tell the truth, you won't have to issue these idle threats. Aaliyah, do you have anything on this foolishness right here? Well, I mean, I already said it before. I think they're getting ready to curtail a lot of this stuff because all these free lunches from all these leeches, all this shit is going to be over in just a second because all this free advertising and oh, and all this, oh, I don't want to work a nine to five. I'll just be an influencer shit. All that shit is about to cease. But hey, it was fun while it lasted, right? Hmm. Okay. Hmm. It's the idle threats for me. What you got, Mr. Schroeder? Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, I got a whole lot. And let's start with this. That's the Chinese man's app. So y'all get set up when the Chinese man don't want to do it. So you threaten to quit. But the moment they tell you, hey, that might be a potential political, have some sort of geopolitical issue with America, then suddenly it's all your livelihood. I am not disappointed to see the TikTok clock app go away because like everything with niggas and when they get involved, y'all have made that shit a hot ghetto stinking in trenched mess every time you pop up it's a bitch giving bad advice about sprinkling and sprinkling here and there you know? it's a quote-unquote alpha male motherfucking influencer too stupid to realize that the term alpha didn't even apply to no fucking wolves like most of you dumb motherfuckers didn't know that actually applies to chicken so de- congratulations on being the biggest cock in the fucking hen house y'all <laughs> literally make me so fucking sick i am not sad to see that app go quite frankly i'm really tired i'm like dc get a regular fucking nine to five take your ass to school be productive citizens everybody wants to influence but nobody has the right life advice nobody has the right wisdom and everybody want to do all this dumb shit for clicks and likes and views i'm glad it will that be, it'll see some of the attention horn so do what y'all gotta do Oh, wait, you, you're talking about a community that has done nothing but shit all over people with educations, which I find hilarious now how some of the major proponents of education are some of the main people who was talking shit about educated people not that fucking long ago. That's how two-faced a lot of these motherfuckers are. That's just how much they flip-flop when y'all were on here talking about degrees don't keep you warm at night. Degrees don't make you better than nobody. All that do is get you in all this student loan it. Who wants to go to school for four years? Why should you have to do that when you can just do this and all this type of shit? And then y'all, so this was all the shit I sat up and listened to black folks saying on social media for years. You know, making fun of boss bitches, educated women. Oh, you a PhD and shit like that. I'm a PhD. They made that a whole thing where they mocked and joked about shit like that women that were highly educated was a bad thing right y'all shit all over that for years so miss me with that bullshit check it y'all so it passed the house and we have to you know wait for it to pass the senate but here's here's the thing the senate is in no rush and have not penciled in the date since last time i checked to vote on the shit but i tell you what take this and learn this lesson real quick so that you don't become the person that if they decide to shut down their app, it affects your livelihood. Huh? That's not no way to live. That seems a little bit stressful to me, to be honest with you. You hope everybody's getting along so that you can eat. That's not that's not a way to live. I'm just going to keep it real with you. So I will be following that story and seeing what happens. Um, pray to whatever gods, goddesses or whatever you praise in order to keep your livelihood going. If you are solely living off any of these apps, they like you one day, they don't like you the next day. All you have to say that fried chicken is good and you will lose a thousand followers because those bitches don't like fried chicken. They like fried pork chops. That's how petty social media is. Okay. Moving right the fuck along as usual. Now, I want to talk about Quan and his and his mis- mistaken of power. Ladies, I don't know whether I was on here, whether I was in Discord, whether I was doing a private live or whatever, okay? But this is the thing. 
these figureheads that you see that are black men, black people, to be honest with you, but I'm focused on the black men right now. If they're a judge, if they're a cop, if they're a lawyer, if they're a doctor, whatever, make no mistake about it. When it's time for society to write down in stone what's going to happen going forward with that society, black men don't have a say so in it. Let me look at my chat. I don't give a fuck what they do for a living. They don't have a say so. They are figureheads to keep the, the natives from getting restless. OK, nobody wants to hear them. Nobody wants to talk to them. Nobody gives a fuck what they think. They don't they, they can't do anything. OK, you see a lot of symbolic gestures is what you see. Black mayor in Chicago da, 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 implemented this. Uh huh. When Zaddy's ready to change any of that, he will. Have we forgotten that black men are conquered? I think sometimes a lot of black women forget that. Okay. Sometimes the example I used in Discord was, you know, you you make a child think they picked what's for dinner when you actually gave them the options to select from. So are we having pizza? Are we having spaghetti? Or have, are we having lasagna? The child will pick which one they want and they feel like they made that choice. When you actually made the choice because you're the one that put the options there. I hope y'all understand what I'm saying and get these gems I'm dropping. When you see black judges and all that shit where they don't have any power, okay? They don't have any say so in what you got going forward, what your life is going to be like, unless you let them into your personal life because he's knocking your motherfucking ass the fuck out, pull up. But they don't have any say so in what's going on. So when you're asking these people to get up in power, a lot of them, once they get elected, they see they don't have any power. So then they start being corrupt stealing your tax dollars, going on vacations with mistresses, men misappropriating campaign funds and shit like that because they don't have any power. Can, can Tiffany hindered anybody? She was over there acting like she was queen of the motherfucking South. And then she turned around, spent these people money. And now Zaddy done stepped in to see what the fuck she got going on. Ladies, I say all that to say this. Black men don't have any power. Whenever you see them around important Zaddies, they are being placated. So they can just shut the fuck up. Your protests don't mean anything. But let me let me get where the fuck I'm going. Anybody remember this? I want to see something. <laughs> Anybody remember this? This is when Donald met with the black pastors, right? To let them get it off their chest and what they thought should happen going forward. Okay. That's them showing you we're listening to you, but they ain't listening to you. Like it says in the title, he has a mouth, the black man, but he doesn't have any power. All he can do is go and beg white men for a little bit of comfort. That's all he can do. And these are the men that you hitch your, your fucking future to. I'm sorry, not the fuck sorry. It's a very dumb decision, by the way, to keep it real with you. So they bring these black men to the table. Nothing gets done. But the but they're soothed. It's almost like giving them some sort of tranquilizer. So they just simply shut the fuck up. OK, you're annoying. But here's the thing. This has always happened. Always happened. And here we are sitting at that same motherfucking table asking that same fucking zaddy to help us the fuck out. Ladies, I said they don't have any power. LBJ sitting there looking at all them niggas like, say what you got to say and get the fuck out of my office. He's not saying that, but rest assured, that's what he's thinking. LBJ was so motherfucking bored listening to this nigga ramble. It's like, yep, oppression. Yep, inequality. Yep, discrimination. Say what you got to say and get the fuck out of here. All right, Kangi, have a good day. Aaliyah, what you got? No, I'm so glad that you brought up Miss um, Henyard because I saw earlier where um, the judge actually gave Fonnie Willis the option of removing herself or Nathan Wade from the case. So let's see if she loves herself more than that nigga to put herself first like he did when he took the stand. See, this choice should be an easy one, but let's see what she does since she wants to talk all big and bad about not emasculating a black man. So again, we're going to see what's more important to you. Oh, Fanny, Fanny, women. okay, Fanny. Fonny, I'm talking about Fanny, Fonny Willis. What made me think of her is when you brought up the other um, mayor from Dalton, mm -hmm. Illinois. 
And so that's what made me think about it because she is only one of several that are black women that are in these positions that are down bad at this point. And that's what, what I saw earlier about Fani. So I just wanted to see what's more important to her because I know a lot of black women are lost because he, if he actually cared one iota about her, he wouldn't put her in a position to have to choose. He would just step down. See, this is how I know the majority of black women don't know shit about real love and real companionship because real love is caring enough about your partner not to even put them through certain shit, especially if it ruins them. And let's see who's going to have to take the L here. Hey, Fonny, do you think Nathan loves you enough to step down? Honey, I can bet you he doesn't love you that much. Not that much now the question is do you love yourself enough and the career that you worked for enough to actually make the call for him even if he doesn't we'll listen see. speaking of white men in power right fanny thought that she was running things with her man right the zaddy done stepped in and said one of y'all need to get the fuck up out of here at the end of the day the white man is going to make the decision and i'm so baffled i'm so baffled why you think black men have any power you know what you ought to be thankful for that they don't have any power because guess who heads they gonna knock off if they do get any power <laughs> take a you got one guess if they actually had power half of y'all wouldn't be alive today pull up on me what's going on mr Shrove? i'm glad you brought this picture up because i was just thinking about it i swear we have like <laughs> psychic twin powers going on here but i submit before the panel uh who was it oh yeah the inventor of the side part, Frederick Douglass and Abraham Lincoln, if I'm not mistaken, mm. they had a similar partnership where they talked about it. It was actually um, Frederick Douglass who talked to Lincoln because once he freed the slave, he's, he wanted to send their asses back to the motherland. So, I mean, they had a falling out because of that. But, I mean, good old Abe heard his ass out. It, it just the history just keeps repeating itself with these figures. My question to black women, Fani the Fupa included, is girl, <laughs> why the fuck do y'all, you have the choice between a life preserver and an anchor. You bitches always grab the motherfucking anchor. I need to know why. Why is drowning <laughs> a choice that you bitches will make because you want to tether yourselves to niggas with no power? Niggas do not have power. I'm sorry to tell y'all, black men ain't got no power except the power they siphon off black women who are too dick stupid to understand what the fuck they're giving them. That's why funny in the world of her. And uh, back to that mayor in Illinois, there's a bunch of other shit going on and as to why the alphabet boys got involved. If y'all don't know, on that trip to Austin, Texas, where she was in first class, one of the girl, one of the people with her got essayed that's why the alphabet boys are really getting in on it now wow. you know she's one of the protectors of that type of thing because remember when we did a whole live on this bitch she was protecting one of those offenders that's on that list and had him around children again like i said they're very fucking dangerous but ladies nothing's going to change i can promise you that um, these pictures look very, very similar to one another. We at the table with a bunch of preaching ass, dusty motherfuckers pull up. MLK's dusty, y'all already know that shit. And he's sitting at the table. That dude on his left, that would be his left, is a pastor as well. Nobody don't got time for this shit. And ladies, speaking of the church and speaking to pastors, did you know that the black church pulled in 800 billion dollars in the last 10 years not one business not one thriving neighborhood not no new degrees education hospitals none of that shit i said 800 billion with a b and in the last yeah. decade say what yeah. Do you realize that came from predominantly um, socioeconomically disadvantaged neighborhoods where they get the largest donations? Y'all are tithing into something, but all you're doing is lying in the coffers of these motherfucking men whom y'all have idolatized. Like, they are not your God. I have not, and that's just in the past 10 years. At one point, the black church was pulling in roughly $12 billion annually. That's a billion dollars a month, half a billion dollars every two weeks of the month. So you mean to tell me in all that time, all that time, $800 billion, you could have built an entire metropolis. You could have updated the schools. There shouldn't be infrastructure problems. You truthfully, you shouldn't have to ask white men for a goddamn thing if we're going to go by those metrics. So why Period. are you still begging? Period. $800 that billion dollars is enough on. to buy fucking Amazon. It's enough to buy a whole bunch of very thriving businesses right now, but it's going into these black males' pockets and you're voluntarily giving it to them. And Kaysel, I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Yes, 
billion with a B, 800 billion in the last decade. I want you to check me. Go ahead and check me. Look it up yourself, right? You'll see what I'm talking about. Dollar data, much, data got paid. How much huh? is it from black women versus black men? Is what I want to know. <laughs> Shit. How much? I, I would, I, I would bet probably damn near all of it. Oh, mm -hmm. that's what I was gonna say too. I say roughly ninety to ninety-six percent of that probably came from poor, disadvantaged black women tithing ten percent of your income. You can get the fuck out of my face with that nonsense. With everything that we've said so far, <laughs> I'm tickled by this, ladies. Ladies, just like the chick that we just showed you that was up there begging for TikTok to not go anywhere because we need you. We need you, TikTok. And it's changed my life. But white men stay changing your life. I know the Chinese old the TikTok, but white men say whether you can have access to TikTok, pull up. That's how that shit work. But anyway, y'all, that's that's why when, yeah, down to the base, uh, uh, white men only. But check it. Look at this screen. Y'all know that's Elon Musk on the right. And y'all know that's the fruity lemon on the left. Very, very fruity. Um, Elon's not going. If y'all don't know the backstory with this powerful white man and this disenfranchised, weird-ass nigga on the left, right? Elon Musk gave Don Lemon a show on X, formerly known as Twitter. Elon was very gracious to do so because Don Lemon is very, very boring to me. And every time I've seen him during a New Year's, you know, celebration or whatever, he's a fucking drunk, allegedly. His ass be tore the fuck up from what I can see. But anyway, so Elon was gracious enough to bring his boring motherfucking ass over there to X. So Don Lemon said, thank you very much. And I want my very first interview to be with you, Zaddy. <laughs> Zaddy. Elon didn't want to agree to it, but he went over there to deal with the, the, the dude anyway, okay? You are on, Don, this man's platform, thinking you're going to check him. See, this is what I'm talking about. This is what the fuck I'm talking about. When you're in somebody else's house, you need to behave like you're in somebody else's house. If you don't like the rules and procedures, you need to move to another house, build your own house, and whatever you say will go in there. But we know black men didn't build anything, but they keep trying to match chest to chest with white men, and they get smacked the fuck down every time. Do y'all know he sat there and asked that man about his ketamine use? He asked him why his... um what is it called? Hate speech, not being moderated and all that shit. And the whole time, the whole time, Elon was sitting there very, very calm, but he already knew that he was going to cancel that show as soon as he got the fuck up off of there. Ladies, the very first episode never even aired on Don Lemon's show. He's going to have to show it on YouTube and just show it on his platform over there on X, but it will not be a partnership contract agreement because he couldn't keep his dick liquor closed, his literal dick liquor closed and stop trying to match chess with a, a, a white billionaire. Not happening. But I got a little snippet here. Huh? I want y'all to see the, the alpha male energy that that zaddy put in over here. Where's my clip at? Let's do this. Hate speech on the platform is up. Do you believe that X and you have some responsibility to moderate hate speech on the platform? That you wouldn't have to answer these questions from reporters about the great replacement theory as it relates I to I don't Democrats, have to answer these questions. The great replacement theory as it relates to Jewish people. Do you think that? I don't have to answer questions from reporters. Don, the only reason I'm doing this interview is because you're on the X platform and you asked for it. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, I would not do interview with this interview. So you don't think, you, do you think that you wouldn't get in trouble or you wouldn't be criticized for these things? I'm or criticized that there constantly. Was... I could care less. Illuminating in so many ways. Mm -hmm. right. How sexy was that? How sexy was that? I get criticized all the time. I can care less. The only thing he didn't say to him was, you, no, I'm, I'm not a Roy G. Biv sassy ass motherfucker you care about what motherfuckers say about you that's what's stifling your fucking community the whole time that's why you're pretending like you rich when you on instagram you got a whole stack of bills on the left but you playing soft girl life in the front everybody knows it's full of shit then don said you don't think you're gonna get in trouble don i think you don lemon i think you misunderstand that's the type of zaddy that put people in trouble. He don't get in trouble. He can come to Congress, talk and be grilled and all that shit. But at the end of the day, he's still going to have his shit. Don Lemon, do you understand that you're sitting across from a zaddy that can have a dinner date that's not on planet Earth? Let me look at my, look at, let me look at my chat. If he get tired 
of sharing a planet with you, he can go up in his rocket and eat dinner there. He don't even have to be there. And then you bucked up at him after he gave you a job, you stupid motherfucker. This, ladies, black men don't got it. They don't got it. You need to back the fuck up. They don't know the rules of the house. That's why they always put up out the house. Aaliyah, you got anything on this? I oh, absolutely love this shit. I have a lot. Because, see, this is what I've been waiting for. Because, see, it's funny how he wants to sit up and preach about hate speech on Twitter. And then this goal kind of goes back to the TikTok thing that we were talking about earlier. Because they got whole compilation videos that they have put together of nothing but hate speech against white people yes. that has been all over TikTok. If you look up the YouTube videos, they have put it together and it is shameful to say the least. But as usual, since black people can't be racist, they think that they can say whatever they want to say and everybody else can just fall in line. But see, again, nobody else is going to bring that up because black people can do no wrong. But see, this is what I want to say about this motherfucker here. In what world can you go on somebody else's platform and think you're going to be allowed to attack them and then from Frame it as asking the tough questions and thinking that's going to fly. Done, my friend. You cannot get back into the good graces of the left wing liberal media by attempting to attack the man that allowed you to park your ass on his platform when the other showed you the door. See, we discussed this back when he first got fired. Go listen to that video. It doesn't matter how much you like white dick or how much white dick you take. You're not going to be allowed to say whatever you want to say about white women. The only group of women that has ever been allowed Allowed to be blatantly disrespected is black women and that's because their men started it and black women didn't check it and they willingly participated in their own degradation and they still do but that's a topic y'all are still lying about though what Don Lemon just did is the equivalent of going to somebody else's house sitting your ass on their couch and then propping your funky ass feet up on the coffee table excuse me you can't come into my fucking house questioning me about shit especially when you're being accusatory, inflammatory and disrespectful and calling it controversial or my personal favorite. I'm just trying to hold you accountable. See, that's another word that I tried to leave back in 2023, a word that has been overused and abused, but it just refuses to go the fuck away. And it's because these liberal ass words y'all have been using has a lot of you fucked up in the game. Y'all don't know shit about accountability. Most of you are only for freedom of speech when someone is given an opinion that you like. You want everyone else to be silenced. That's usually how that shit goes. Say whatever you want about Elon Musk, but he purchased Twitter. It matters not how he did it. And I'll bet the ones talking the most shit won't get the fuck up off of it. Just like TikTok. But give me the platform that has been created by black men that all you motherfuckers are using and advertising from. And say what you want about Tesla. What automobiles do black men have? What are they massively building, producing, or providing on a global scale? Are they even overseeing the production of any American-made cars? What about African-made? What is the last thing you used in America that was made in Nigeria or Kenya? I want to know. I'll, I'll wait. See, that's why y'all look foolish criticizing other people's contributions when black men contribute absolutely nothing. So until your community produces an equivalent, you may want to hush about who did what or who designed what or who built what. Your men do absolutely nothing in this country. They don't build anything. They're not providing anything. That's yet another reason black women always look foolish to me criticizing other groups of men when your men have only contributed making bastard babies, broken homes, mass incarceration, crime, killing sprees, and the spread of communicable disease. Outside of that, they haven't created shit that doesn't require you to go back in the past at least 100 years to talk about shit you were not even present for. Damn. Damn. Ain't that a bitch. She went the fuck off, but tell me where she just lied. It's the truth. The shit that you looking at me on right now, that came from outside of the black community. The lights that you're using to go get that lemonade that you're craving right now. Oh, baby, the lemonade and the lights came from somebody else. There's nothing inside that community that you use every day that you absolutely need and can't get on with your day without. What's going on, Mrs. Rogue? I'm loving this conversation. It's fucking amazing.
I too love this fucking conversation because I think about all the shit that these bitches get across platforms and lament at white men about. First of all, it is just as Aaliyah said, what have white men and black men given the world that they haven't been riding the coattails of black white men to get? Um, I'll tell you a few I can think of. It's penis, pestis, problems, and poverty. That's about all I could come up with when I thought about them motherfuckers. Black women, stop cutting off your nose to spite your face and learn to shut the fuck up. Another reason why I'm glad TikTok will be gone because I'm tired of you bitches bumping your motherfucking gums and not shutting the fuck up. You know damn well black men have not built you anything. They refuse to build your communities. That's why you had the poor man's divorce. That's why you had to be included in the new deal. That's why you had to worry about that's how you got to feed your kids. That's how you became the face of the welfare queen. And then you have the nerve to get up and say, well, white men put drugs in the community, but who the fuck sold them? Who the fuck was out there peddling the guns? It's always somebody else's fault. This time you can't move the goalposts. And as for Lemonhead, fuck that nigga. Okay, I never <laughs> liked him. Don Lemon don't even like black women. Let me be real with you. He, he doesn't. He does not like black woman, black women at all, unless he can exploit them for some sort of or some sort of emotional, spiritual, or fucking publicity publicity labor. Fuck that nigga. I'm glad Elon put him in this motherfucking place, right where the fuck he belongs, where they all belong beneath What's white it? men because they're comfortable there. Mistress Rogue, the way he hold up one second, because I got something I want to say. Rose Green, I'm looking in the back. Rose Green, are you dusty? No, ma'am, I'm not. Okay, what you got? I just wanted to say two things. First of all, why would Elon Musk be concerned about what anybody has to say when he doesn't even have to ask permission to leave the planet? Period. And second of all, Don Linham needs to be worried about what his daddy thinks about him getting fired for the second time because he wasn't <laughs> happy about it the first time. Listen, he disappointed his daddy long time ago when he was swallowing mushroom tips, right? His daddy was waiting on grandbabies. And he, <laughs> let me shut the fuck up before we I'm have talking about his white daddy at home that he's married to. Listen, all of them are attracted to him. I'm glad you brought that up. But I have, I God damn it, I lost my train Easy. of thought. Because I'm about to yes. say something fucked up. You said he was waiting on grandkids and Don was swallowing them. <laughs> Girl, it's a <laughs> mess. It's a hot ass mess. But they keep going. They keep going. I love the way, listen, y'all. Listen, okay. I Those of you that are not attracted to white men, I don't get it. I, I don't. They were, Did y'all see where they were just sitting there? And he didn't yell at Don once. How dare you ask me that? But he didn't get sassy with the sassy bitch. He simply said, I don't have to answer these questions. Whenever y'all read that bottom ticker down there, read the bottom ticker down there. Okay. Being powerful is like being a lady. If you have to tell people that you are, you aren't. Margaret Thatcher, this is how that goes. Elon didn't have to say anything. You already know what he brings, what he's worth, what he's fixing to do. And he always got that goddamn alpha male look on his face. The shit is fucking amazing. Listen, I don't have to like everything about Elon Musk. But ladies, y'all better get on the right side of history. He dragged him without raising his voice. Elon dragged Don Lemon simply by sitting across from Don Lemon so you can see the comparison between that sack of shit and him. Do you understand me? Oh, oh the pen is always has always been mightier than the sword. See, while you sit up and talk and run your mouth, I tell you what, contract canceled. That's Period. all he had to say. End of discussion. I win, you lose. Let's the thing go. is, y'all, he was even gracious enough to grant him the fucking interview. And that's how you start off. You could even show reverence to the man that gave you a second chance. Are you fucking stupid? Because let's face it, CNN booted your ass. They couldn't wait. Truth be told, they probably couldn't wait to get rid of your ass. But he gave you an opportunity and a platform to speak. And how did you repay him? By disrespecting him? And he just took it on the nose like, the champ, like a champ. And then he went back in the office and said, and no, that was Look. it. Gold 33 said it, and I said it in Discord. Listen, when pen goes to paper, black men will not be invited to that. They are at the kiddie table, swinging their legs because their legs too short to hit the floor, eating hot dogs while they over there are eating sirloin at the grown man's table. Make no mistake about it. When you see a black man figurehead, that's all he is. 
a figurehead. I don't know if y'all remember that movie, Boomerang. I am aging myself right now. You remember Lady Eloise? That was the name yeah. of the company, Lady Eloise. And it had her face on it and everything. Lady Eloise didn't have no say-so in what went on in that fucking company. She was just a figurehead made to think that she was powerful in there. Pull up on me. Let me look at this chat. Yes, Colorful, colorful Rose, she just thought she was powerful. She was the picture on the box. OK, just like with ain't your mama. Right. She for years, she had been on top of that box selling pancakes left, right and center. But that money was going somewhere else. Black judges, black cops, black whatever you have any respect for. Darling, he ain't got no power. He think he does. And that's why he's a pompous jerk. But you better move the fuck back because the person that's going to be making the decision is going to be looking like Elon. Period. We, we have always said that a lot of these people, black people especially, are under the impression that Braun is what wins the war. Braun is not what wins the war. It never has been. We've been saying that for years. Go back. Hmm. Braun is, it's, I mean, it's always the brains. It's always been the brains. And the thing is, we don't have to like Elon Musk, all his decisions. People can talk about all the petty shit they want at the end of the day. Oh, he got all these children. Oh, he got this. Oh, he got that. Yeah, he got a lot. But let, again, let, that goes back to let's talk about what your men doing on top of everything else. So, yeah, this man got a shit ton of kids, but he got a whole lot of other shit going on that you don't want to even acknowledge. Meanwhile, your man just sitting up making a bunch of bastard babies and got what to go with that. I'm just mm -hmm. waiting. I bet wow. you ain't none of his kids hungry. I bet you his kids can get off the goddamn earth if they wanted to. I bet you they could play a game of Monopoly off You're earth. Screwing. Someone did the metric for it. He pays $12 million in private education for all of his kids, y'all. They go to the best schools in the country. But it makes me think about something my husband said. He says that patience is pivotal to perseverance. And he, I was like, well, why do you say that? He's like, well, how do you think white men do what they did? He's like, we were patient and that's pivotal if you're gonna persevere and take over. And I get it now watching that interview. White men understand how to be patient. They have, understand when to sit quietly. They understand mm -hmm. when to attack. They understand how to attack. They're far more strategic and they play the long game. Black men don't think past tomorrow. Hell, they don't think past an hour from now. No wonder they've been conquered by everybody. When you see a white man talking a bunch of shit, you safe. You better be scared when he shut up. Did you hear what I said? I spend my life around white men. Do you hear me? While they're talking shit, everything all good. The moment he stops talking shit, he's planning. Y'all be better get behind that wall. Y'all better get behind that wall. Listen, and speaking of behind the wall, I got me a nigga in the back waiting. Listen, I can't with that shit. Sorry, not the fuck sorry. And moving right along. Okay. Who this? Who this? Who is this? Harambe? <laughs> you disrespectful. As her, you disrespect the Harambe. And, and listen, RIP to Harambe. Mistress Rogue is very disrespectful when it comes to the dead. <laughs> he just disrespected the shit out of Harambe. Sorry, Harambe. May you rest in banana heaven. Okay? <laughs> but, ladies, this is one of the most successful writers in Hollywood. Another figurehead. Right. Some of your favorite shows, Supernatural. Right. Um, one of my favorite shows was um, Six Feet Under. That show was amazing. And he had something to do with that as well. Ladies, you saw on the thumbnail, he's a booty snatcher. We just had somebody up here named Rose Green and she was talking about their daddy and how they, you know, black men prefer. Y'all be worried about Becky's. And we had a fire ass live on Tuesday. Y'all be worried about Becky's and shit. But a lot of y'all sons, daddies, and brothers, and uncles, cousins too, they prefer white men. You talk about the preference. <laughs> yeah, you think it's light-skinned girls and white girls, yeah, whatever. The real preference is white men. Ladies, I don't know if y'all remember that passage in the Bible, right? Where that woman was very, very sick with a blood illness she had for 12 years. And she simply wanted to touch Jesus's garment, just touch it so that she can be healed. Well, that's what black men do when it comes to white men. They just want to simply stand next to them. Maybe some of that oomph will rub off on me. Maybe some of that power will rub off on me. And some of them take the, um, the, the path of fucking on Becky so that some of the power from her daddy can rub off on it. It, it goes pretty deep, but I'm not going to have that whole conversation right here, right now, because this ain't the platform for it. 
But ladies, he's going to jail. Why is he going to jail? Okay, Viola Davis, I need you to pull up because this one of your best friends, bitch. But yeah, yeah. Blue Bloods and Supernatural executive producer charged with assault, right? So he took this white man, heterosexual white man, that he was in a writer's program with. OK, he had already told this man, listen, you know, I'm flattered, but I'm not interested. He had been going in on this white man for a long time because he wanted to get some of that, that zaddy shit. Right. He told him, I'm I'm not like that. I don't do that. So this goofy motherfucker went on ahead and offered dinner after they finished some work. This allegedly he put a little bit of substances in this man's drink took the man home and went to licking and sucking and thrusting and caring and hoping and praying. Listen, he R-worded this white man, okay? This is the thing, okay? That's his silhouette. He does, he wants to go by John, John Doe. Ladies, I see this a lot with black men, okay? Don Lemon's husband's white. Um, that that what does that dude name Lee Daniels? His husband's wife. You have Billy a lot Porter. of say that again. I was saying Billy Porter. Yeah, that piece of crap. His husband's white ladies. They get on you. Black men get on you about stepping out of the community and entertaining white men. But when they want a little bit of dangleberry, they entertain them more than each other. Okay, the hood niggas will fuck on each other, no doubt. But when it's time to get serious, those with money, those with, you know, a little bit of prestige or whatever, they going to fuck on a white man. But they tell you, uh-uh, that's treacherous. You don't love yourself. You self-hating, bed and all this extra shit. Ladies, black men love white dick. Let me look at my chat because I want I, I want to know what's being said. They are rusting anyone? <laughs> since day one. I should have put, put a picture of him up here. Pull up on me. They yeah. are arrested anyway. Because did he get caught in the back seat with two? I'm just saying, if we're, we're got to keep it quote unquote fair and balanced with these motherfuckers. Since it's so terrible when black women go out and find love and divest and take their resources away from the community, what do you call it when black men do all those things? Oh, wait, I'm sorry. He's being pro-black then because, you know, according to them, they can make more of you black women. They can do all these things without your presence, but they they can't sustain themselves without having to acquiesce to the demands of white men. Hmm. <laughs> this is let very them tell it they do it because the white community is more accepting of the lifestyle than black people and the black community. And I have to call complete and total bullshit on that yep. because black mm -hmm. women are highly supportive of that community. If nothing else, they're walking around here they're acting just like exactly fighting for them, marching for them, taking up for them, calling them. I mean, we can take that conversation on and on, the different ways that Black women support that community and those men. So don't nobody want to hear that bullshit. That's a bunch of bullshit. They just doing what they want to do because that's what they do. Anybody who gets any money, they just take their money elsewhere. That's what they do. Ladies, Monday afternoon, I was picking up some packages from UPS that, you know, was signed. they they were getting to the point where they were going to get sent back. And my husband didn't have time. I had to go get them. So I get there and there is a black woman behind the counter already. She hated the fact that I walked in because she was on her phone looking at her timeline and all this shit here. Gave me 50 bags of attitude. And I was very kind to her. Hey, your hair is beautiful. Oh, my goodness. I don't mean to interrupt you, but I need to pick up my packages. And I gave her my slips that had been left on my door. She didn't say one word to me. She slammed my, she didn't know what was in the box. She slammed the shit on the counter. Mind you, there's a sissy behind me. So when I get my shit, I pull my truck up to the, the front of the store so I can curbside it. She, hey, hey, how you doing? Oh, my God. You wearing that? That looks that look good. You you ate that. I'm yes, like, yes, honey. Okay. Yes. OK, so when they say that black women ain't supportive of that community, that is dog shit. They have been way too supportive of that community. So much so that they wrecking y'all fucking lives, wrecking your goddamn career and all that shit. You can't say shit back to them, but they can call you everything, fish, all this extra shit. But if you say something to them, you're going to be in trouble. And ladies, you, you ladies, you had something to do with that, ma'ams, because you was clapping and, 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 and putting up. I, I can't. But look at this picture. Go ahead. I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry, let's not even talk about this damn, some of this damn makeup they walking around wearing looking just like them. But we Girl. won't go there. See, they ain't ready for that conversation. They looking just like them with some of these, all these goddamn lashes and this dramatic eye makeup and all this other shit. Yeah, they giving them a run for their goddamn money now with some of this makeup. That, I'm sorry, but go ahead. Honestly, I believe black women have escalated that to all the lashes and contouring and all that shit. Because secretly, pull up, mammies. Secretly, you know that black men suck it down to the base. So therefore, you want to look like you might have a base to suck. Pull up on me because you're just, you're looking like Transformers with all that shit on. Sorry, not the fuck sorry. Some of it, it looks like you got some shit going on in your head that a therapist might be able to talk you out of. But I think the way y'all are, piling that shit up you kind of admitting that you already know the t and pretending like you don't on the screen this man uh, was always always trying to jump in pictures right it's always with white men okay because i did a, a, a intensive image search and he's always cheesing next to a white man because he's trying to touch the hem of the cloth he's always doing that and uh this picture here OK, I know he pissed that she jumped in that picture, but make no mistake about it. Lawrence Andrews is not the only black man that's like this. I just wanted to make that very fucking clear. Either y'all got anything on that. Let me check my back. Hey, I must object to one thing, though. I <laughs> love Supernatural. I am a Supernatural fan. So, look, he will not ruin this show for me. I mean, when I saw some of the shows that he actually had executive produced, I'm, not, I'm sure he's only one of many producers. But I hate that that's the first thing they bring up, the projects like Blue Bloods and other shows like that. These are some very well-known, highly popular television shows. And they shouldn't have associated those people's shit with him. But see, this... This guy is a writer and executive producer, but I don't really get these Hollywood sickos because, see, there are more than enough people that are into some of the same things that they are. So why not party with the people who do what you're into and leave everyone else alone? I guess that's not challenging enough. You just have to force people who don't want you like that and to do some of the fucked up shit you want them to do. Of course, you're not going to hear a peep out of black people about this because his victims were white. And I can hear these sick motherfuckers now talking about what about Jeffrey Dahmer? What about Ed Book? See, they always got to find a way to make black men the victims of everything until they're actually the victimizers. And then they still have to throw white men in yeah. for good measure. They've always done that. People can't just talk about Bill Cosby, R. Kelly, or P. Diddy without throwing some white men under the bus. What about Harvey Weinstein? What about Charlie Sheen? My neighbor's pet goat, Charlie. See, it's always <laughs> what about somebody else? It's always a what about somebody else when it comes to these people that's why i really wish they would stay away from the use of that word accountability because they really don't know anything about it so they're not going to talk about this don't expect black people to talk about this oh they will to contrast it about how he's going to get a different treatment from the motherfuckers that you, the aforementioned motherfuckers you mentioned so when you bring up oh what about harvey weinstein what he did yeah and he's been held accountable as has Charlie Sheen, as has a lot of these white men, because white men hold each other accountable, especially when they bring Look, it down the head of the brain. I literally was just getting ready to say that. Let's take white man, black men. Everybody that's getting punished for the bullshit that they're doing, making victims, they're going to a white man's jail. What jail is a white man going to that belongs to a black man? Please pull up. Because every time accountability is issued out, white men are doing it. Right. But what I've seen on the contrary is y'all calling little girls fast, making excuses for, the, you know, them being victimized because you're trying to protect a black man, whether he sucked it down to the base or not, whether he's a, a, a habitual baby daddy, whether he's spreading STIs all over the motherfucking place. It's all about the protection of him. Or, so, like I said, you can bring up Jeffrey Dahmer if you want to and Ed Buck and whoever the fuck else. Ed Buck and Jeffrey Dahmer went they went to goddamn it white men's prison. 
Okay. Yes. Oh, and w- one more thing. Uh, y'all always talking about this shit that black men go through. You know, black men had no problem getting in front of, I think it was Robert Kennedy and saying they shouldn't have to pay child support for being sexually fucking reckless. So let's stop with that nonsense. You want them to be seen as men. They operate as boys. If that in a system, they are completely infantilized and talking to all, literally sitting in front of this white man complaining about child support because they didn't wrap up their dicks and they act like they're just so fucking helpless when it comes to pussy. How pathetic are you? They are up under white men asking for shit. And ladies from here on out, that's how it's going to be. It's always been that way. Okay. That's why they send y'all to that welfare office or online now to go ahead and make sure you got something so that you can support them. So they have time to sit up on an RFK's panel and ask them for shit. It's look who owns it. I can't. That whole child support conversation was completely asinine, but they've been, let's, let's just be honest. They've been trying to find ways around or trying to find ways to finagle out of getting out of paying that child support. Now, for years they even wanted to start a petition i haven't forgotten that shit i mean they have tried everything at this point how about and dying this and is, vasectomies that could fix the problem all together but get but look these are the only group of men that are so publicly and so blatantly putting it out there that they just don't want to have to be responsible for their own children they don't want to have to take care of their own children you're like fucking to make them you're like raw dogging they make so many of them, but they don't want to actually have to be responsible for taking care of any of them. That's the crazy part. And I don't understand why it's a woman within a mile radius that would want to get these niggas some pussy. And, but it, they exist. They're still laying on their back, spreading it wide, giving it up to niggas you know don't really want to be bothered with you and or the kids. So why the fuck y'all keep doing this? It's beyond me. Kelsey, baby, whoever clicked that link in the back, um, your device wasn't connected, so you're not, you, you know, I couldn't let you up because nobody was going to be able to hear you. I think I saw Ebony in the back, but she's not back there anymore. But let's truck it right along because that's what we do. Ladies, the community itself is, uh, let me tell y'all something. Let me, because I, 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 I said I wasn't going to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. Okay. Y'all think, I don't see all the comments. I don't. But every now and then, you know, if I'm waiting in line for something or whatever, I'll take a look, a quick glance. I'll see maybe four or five comments at a time. And then I, I keep going, to whatever. But this one chick, <laughs> she because they're trying to trip me up, they always do. She came to my comment section and she said, you said people were going to be going to jail for fraud concerning them C-19 loans and so on and so forth. That she get, And I ain't seen nobody getting locked up. Again, with what Mistress Rogue was talking about, the patience is there, baby. Just wait. And if you are telling on yourself that you took out a fraudulent loan, you need to go ahead and wait as well. Ladies, sometimes they execute these goddamn warrants years later on down the line. Why she came to my comment section talking about that, I don't know. But if I, like I said, if I say the sky is blue, they're going to tell me it's gray sometime. They just want to be anti for the sake of being anti. Back to your community. Uh, or Arrests are being made. Uh, Lil Wayne's up next. I said Lil Wayne's up next. Y'all Tunchi, he went on ahead and took out a fraudulent loan too, but more on that behind the wall with his ugly ass. But they rounding y'all up. And here's the thing. It's not these motherfuckers that's on the street. These are prestigious working 40 hours a week black people. I thought somehow not all black people were on that bullshit. Come to find out, DHS workers, black police officers, all these motherfuckers, are going to jail concerning those fraud loans during C-19. But anyway, here you go. Here you go, ho. Story of betrayal by public workers in New York City. 18 of them arrested today for stealing identities, some of which belong to people who were dead. All this to get financial benefits during the COVID pandemic. City employees charged with illegally getting those benefits. And all this was discovered, by the way, with an investigation into those illegal and unregulated ghost guns. Wow. Let's give reporter Kristen Thorne live in lower Manhattan with a story tonight. Kristen. 
Bill, prosecutors say a Department of Homeless Services employee here in the city was allegedly manufacturing ghost guns out of their home. And in the process of looking into that, that's when investigators discovered this other alleged fraud. In total, five New York City DHS employees, as well as employees of the NYPD, MTA, U.S. Postal Service, and NYCHA have been arrested and charged with conspiracy and other charges. So we're talking 18 government workers. Prosecutors believe between April of 2020 and October of 2021, these employees were responsible for stealing $1.2 million in fraudulent unemployment benefits that were being given out during the pandemic. Prosecutors say the DH employees, they believe, basically spearheaded this entire thing because they had access to the personal information of people staying in shelters. They had access to the paper files, to the electronic files, and they would give that personal information out to their co-conspirators, co and everyone would use it to falsely file for these benefits and get checks in the mail. Stealing the identity of New Yorkers, many of them homeless, and defrauding a critical social safety net program during one of the most challenging times in our histories, in our city's history, uh, is downright uh, shameful, and we allege criminal. Prosecutors believe this group of people were responsible, was responsible for stealing the personal identities of about 170 people. All of the defendants today pled not guilty. So again, woman that was in my comment section, get comfortable because here's the deal. Black, the black community got so much shit going on that I have to select a couple things to talk about. I'm not going to talk about these loans and unemployment benefits and all that shit every time I get up here. I said what I said. They still rounding people up. And just because you got your head so far up under TMZ's ass and all these other gossip people ass, you don't know what's going on. You might want to take your head out their ass for a second and see what's happening around you. The ladies in my Discord know exactly what's going on. They know exactly what's going on. Well fucking informed because they don't have their head up, up under gossip's ass all the time. But here's the deal. Ladies, if you have gotten away with this, don't do it again. I said, if you lied about some shit on these governmental paperwork, you better stop this shit while you are ahead, okay? Because they are still, years later, rounding motherfuckers up, okay? And it's not just, you know, the average dusty bitch. They rounded up hardworking people, huh? Because guess what? They still black. And black people always are looking for a way to get over on the government in which they view have victimized them. They are going to do federal time over some bullshit, okay? When you could simply work, budget, get a second job, whatever. But it's a way to make it out here and everybody wants to live like a fucking rap video. That's not real life. Even your rappers aren't living that way because Lil Wayne is getting ready to be in cuffs if he don't play his cards right and they don't offer him a way to go ahead and pay that money back. Huh? All this, this, all this blinging that you see, it's not real life. Just like I told y'all that Wendy Williams and all the extra shit, that's not real life. Okay. Stop trying to compare your life to what's going on with people that you see on social media. They ain't got it. They just went on ahead and, and um, arrested a couple, right? That took a $400,000 car out of a garage. And then they put that car in a rap video and he's sitting up there flexing on it. Like it was his car. You cannot believe all this bullshit that you see. So ladies, if y'all going to lie to anybody, don't do it with anybody that has a website, website that ends in .gov, okay? This is not 1986, 1996, where you can get away with certain shit like that. You're leaving an internet footprint. And when stuff don't make sense, they're going to, they, 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 you're going to pique their interest. You got anything on this, Aaliyah? I mean, the thing is, we've talked about this behind the wall. Like you said, the ladies behind the wall are not surprised by any of this shit. This shit we talk, have already talked about following people on social media. The shit is not real. The thing is, they're trying to sell you shit that was sent to them for free. We've already talked about this. Like a lot of them, a lot of them people not paying for that shit. They send that shit to them. They in turn sell, sell it to you. And that's what and they get commission from that. So basically, it's free shit. They got that shit free a lot of times. So again, you're the fool that's spending your money on it, putting money where money is supposed to already be. But hey, that's another topic. But what I found most interesting about this topic was I actually went to the comment section of that video. 
and it was in shambles. They are they are handing black folks their ass. I'm just gonna say what it is. They saying this is what happens to your diversity, equity, and inclusion mm -hmm. hires. People on there saying, why is it always the same group of people in every city? They talking shit about black women using the money to buy weave, makeup, hair, and nails, and all this shit. They, I mean, it's just, they saying all kind of shit. They saying it, it's always the same group. So there you go. If you go to this video, I don't want y'all to think that people, that other people are being misled or under any illusions about what's going on within this community because they're not. Yeah, that part. Um, hate speech and that type of shit is slowly, very slowly going out the window because y'all's people are cutting the fuck up. At some point, the hate speech becomes true speech and you cannot censor truth speech if every time sees a smash and grab if every time somebody sees a hair salon or a hair store getting robbed of all their lace fronts and shit pre-plucked bullshit right and it's you then at some point it's not hate speech anymore go ahead mrs Rowe. You know, I think that a lot of people have utilized, this is why I don't like social media, because it's all a fucking illusion. These are the same niggas that think when Forbes says that Lil Wayne is worth $200 million, that means he has $200 million in cash, because they don't understand how net worth actually is calculated. It is your liabilities that are subtracted from your total damn income, and that's basically what with your assets, and what's left is the income and what you do. That's how, that is how net worth is essentially calculated. Lil Wayne does not have $200 million in the bank. He has assets that value up to $200 million per what Forbes says. Y'all are out here believing a fucking illusion. And I too, Aaliyah, love to hang upside down and peruse a few comment sections. And there were on that video with the girl doing what she did, the, the little black thug doing what she did to that little white girl. Oh, the comment section was in shambles for that. For this video, I saw this. I didn't know DZ was going to cover it. They were all up in there. It's the same group. And why, if somebody said, watch, they're going to use this and say, well, this is reparations. This is this or this is that. Mm -hmm. He's like, as if they're owed oh. anything. How many things have, do they have to be given before they can do it? How? What, what else do you need to stay afloat? And then somebody said, at this point, we need to adopt all Black people because they're just children. Listen, if hey. you take nothing else from this show, take this. People are watching. And just because they're not saying anything out loud because they don't want to be fucking canceled doesn't mean these discussions aren't happening. But Black people don't think like that. Y'all think because you can't see them and you can't hear them, it's not happening. And they're going to give you, they've given you an inch and you bitches is trying to take it to space knowing goddamn well ain't none of y'all built a rocket to get there. You can't even build a fucking bridge. <laughs> you need to shut the fuck up and play the background. And Black women, they got special smoke for a lot of you mammy bitches. So I need y'all hoes to really shut the fuck up because I'm a black woman out here trying to make it. Look, y'all. One of the it, first comments I saw, they were saying, why is the usual suspects? That's what they call boom. them. It's always the usual suspects. That's one of the first comments you'll see when you go to that video. That's why I said these people know they are paying very close to fucking attention to who is always causing the fucking problems. I Ladies, promise as, you that. As they get rid of these DEI programs and these attitudes out here about y'all, it's going to get real tough. I, ladies, I don't want y'all to have to experience this shit. I don't. And this is why you taking up for mammies and shit like that is an issue. Because you are going to have to suffer those consequences. She got food stamps, okay? If you're working in DEI and they get rid of that goddamn program, babe, it's over for you. And then you're going to be trying to prove to the next white person, pull up, that you not like them other people. But you, you kind of was... Uh, you didn't say that was fucked up or wow, I can't believe they did that or that that type of shit. Ladies, it's going the fuck down. I wish I wish I could say more here. I really do. And Rose K, we we went over that, that fight on Tuesday and we went the fuck in. It was crazy. But y'all fixing to catch it. OK, you see how many troops they're deploying and how many exercises that they're doing and how they're putting out military personnel in regular cities. OK, you're not going to get that from the shade room and that type of stuff. So after you finish getting your feel of who fucking who on this show and who lied about who and who got a side bitch and all that shit, once you're full, if you can get full of that, go and look at what's actually happening in the world. People are being arrested. People are being denied certain shit based on their race in certain areas. Did you hear what the fuck I just said to you, ladies? You don't think Jim Crow can come back? It absolutely can. Hmm? Well, I, 
Rose K was talking about a lot of the stores are closing. That's mm -hmm. another conversation that we've been talking about for years. Go back, DC. We have been discussing these Walmart closures, and people wanted to argue with us about that and yep. what areas the stores was being closed in and what areas they wasn't. See, a lot of people coming behind us doing our leftovers. That shit we been talked about. And it's I like the um point Mrs. Rogue made about the um assets. Cause see what people also don't take into to account those assets can also be seized to any event that, that those bills are not paid so again we're talking about liquid cash versus you know what like you were saying that's how the net worth is calculated but even still when you um take the assets and you take away the liabilities and get the net worth yeah but those assets could still be seized at any time so and a lot of them are experiencing that right now that's why a lot of them are having to turn around and sell their homes and every damn thing else they have they have no choice especially when the irs comes a calling because you don't want to fuck with the tax man mm -hmm. i don't care how gangster you think you are i guarantee you when they come calling you're gonna get real ungangster very fast Ask me but either way it, she just had to pay a big <laughs> ass tax bill oh, <laughs> listen you better tell them mistress Rowe. you she better tell a big them ass the tax bill shakira was living in damn spain shakira the singer she had to pay like 27 million dollars in taxes i don't give a damn where you are geographically you gonna pay them alphabet boys no matter what acronyms they go by in other countries you have to pay to play that is how life works around here but they don't think like that black people don't see this as a pay to play Oh, yeah. Sidebar, y'all need to know that in the near future, next two, three years, they're actually going to start implementing private grocery stores. So like Costco, but That's for people who don't want to deal with the Nignogs. I hope y'all heard that, that ghetto Mr. shit. Rogue, I did not mean to cut you off. I need y'all to hear what she just said. Ladies, this is another thing the panel said was coming. Ladies, there's certain public buildings you're not going to be allowed in because of these reels that they have of black women cutting the fuck up, black men cutting the fuck up. They are privatizing certain grocery stores. I wanted to make sure that you heard that. So when it's time for you to come in, and, and I, I just came in here and they told me I can't came, come in because I'm black. Y'all, the race card is dead. You need to burn that shit, bury it, and move the fuck on. It's certain stores that can look at you in your face and say, no, ma'am, no, ma'am. But, but, yeah, that's all you're going to have is but, okay? But, 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 no, you can't come in here. We don't want you pouring milk on the ground. We don't want you putting eyelashes in your pussy so that you can hide them, so that you can go put them on. Listen, they, they tired y'all. And then and by 2027, it's going to be real ill out here. Because we yeah. had already, I remember the video that you showed where they had all the shit under lock and key. Well, it's we talked about them not even letting you in the store in a minute. Everything going to be purchased online. And the only thing you're going to be going doing is pulling up to the store to have them bring your groceries out to you. And that's about it. If they don't have a robot doing it by then, because and because. By then, all I'll be doing is hiring people to pull the groceries and bag them up and bring them out to you. But nobody won't, will actually be let inside the store. But for now, in different stores in California, they're already doing that. Yep, A lot Taco of that shit Bell. is under lock and key. what Taco Bell did? There are no Taco Bells in Oakland where you can go inside the dining room. And you can thank your local N-word. God damn it, I almost said it here. You can thank your local black person for why you can't go inside stores. And I said they are closed permanently. Okay. But see, this is shit we talked about years ago. We've been talking, but again, that was some shit that they wanted to keep debating about. So, mm -hmm. but I'm going to just say this, because see, I, I didn't get a, a chance to be on Tuesday's live stream behind the wall, because I was already prepared for niggas and nigga bitches to be ignorant, talking about that whole fight with the white girl. Oh, she got hands and all this other crap. I've been seeing all kind of shit all over Twitter, where they trying to make the black girl a martyr and vilify the white girl, as usual. This type shit they do. You know, but I will say this, this type of shit that y'all saw 
with that video, that's the type of shit that the Bad, bad Girls Club, Baddies, and the Zeus Network has ushered in. And oh, we've talked yeah. about this fight culture within this community for years, too, now. And you could be on board with this because that girl is white, but the world at large is getting sick of black folk as a whole. And I told DZ that a storm is brewing in this country, and when the volcano erupts, divested black women don't want to be anywhere near it. I know I sure as hell don't. And I'm arranging for my exit right now and I won't be providing any more details than that because if that girl dies and I haven't had an update on it so I don't know because people in the comments saying something about an update on Fonnie Willis I don't know but if the girl dies and you bet and she better pray that that girl doesn't now that black girl has a murder charge and her life is gone forever because of a temporary Talk situation Fuck Whatever, that but see, Listen, but we'll, that's we'll, the we'll thing. Talk, we'll talk more about okay. that later because it's a whole okay. bunch of stuff that needs to be said, and it has been said on that previous live. Y'all okay. better be careful okay. out here. Seriously, you better be careful out here. It's getting to the point. Check it, ladies. It's not just grocery stores that's going private. A lot of hospitals are doing so too. It's two hospitals that's within a twenty mile radius of my home. Okay, if your blood pressure, your vital signs are stable. They asking you for the money up front. If you don't have the money for that, that to see the doctor up front, then they sending you the fuck back out that door. I hope you heard what I said. Okay. Everything can go private. Jails went private. There's a lot of private jails. And I know a lot of y'all think none of this shit was going to happen, but here's the deal. It's going to get worse. Y'all keep fighting out here. Keep y'all. I saw a bitch say we need to make bonnets normal. Ain't nobody finna do that. Ain't nobody finna do that. What the uh, fuck does a bonnet have to? You gonna girl. eat a bonnet and you can't have food in your neighborhood? We just told you they privatizing grocery stores. They're privatizing doctors. They're privatizing prisons, bitch. And you worried about wearing a motherfucking bonnet? Oh lord, these priorities are just fucked, Jesus. That's what she said, Mrs. Roke. She said we need to make it normal to wear bonnets in public. And this is the shit that represents y'all, ladies. If y'all have black women in your life that you love. You need to shun them until they get their shit together because there has to be a very, very defined line between you and the bitches that you fuck with. Ladies, they're not playing anymore. It's not even tugging at people's heartstrings when children are hurt anymore. I hope you heard what I said. I don't. Mm. Oh, Lord. Let me check the bank. Why ahead. are we the only group of women that fight for the most low level gutter bullshit like who wants to fight to wear shit that they supposed to be wearing in the house to bed out in public like you want to fight for some bullshit you want to be out in your slippers and your damn pajama bottoms with a damn bonnet on your head and you want to take this is how you want to walk the streets looking you take pride in that and then you got some bitch that's ignorant and gonna stay ignorant sitting back. I wear my bonnet out. I do this. I do it. Making a million excuses for why you wearing your bonnet in public. Girl, shut the fuck up. Yeah, they got too white many. Man. They, they throw a, on hats and wigs for everything else. I'm sorry. Go ahead. There was a white man that once said, black people are the only group of people that thrust the garbage of their society to the top. Yep, and I agree 100%. But I'm, look, I'm not offering these bitches any more advice. Y'all want help? Come behind the wall. I'll give you the skinny. DZ knows we're always back there discussing what we need to discuss and how to get the ladies prepared and get them right in case something pop off. But if this, if a bonnet is the hill these dumb bitches want to die on, may they rest in fucking peace. I don't have time for this dumb shit. You're right. They're, they they are constantly fighting for shit that does not matter, aka niggas and niggering, because them little motherfuckers don't want to go to school any goddamn way. Furthermore, that girl that got fucking just that poor child, I hope she makes it. But there was a boy, uh, about two weeks ago, a white boy, a say, the same thing happened to him, and he actually died. And there are four motherfuckers that are being charged, and that was out in Las Vegas, but not one of them bitches covered it. Why didn't anybody say anything about that? Because he was only 15 and it was four against one and they literally kicked that child to death. He was still a fucking child. And someone said, oh, I read the comment. He said the N-word. Why is that word still pissing y'all off when y'all yelling at each other? <laughs> Why is that one word like the goddamn the end all be all for y'all? You you say it to each other. When you're arguing, you, you say the word. We call you niggas and nigga bitches up here all the time because that's what the fuck you act like. But the moment a white person says it, suddenly y'all got to turn into incredible motherfucking Hulk or you got to act like a pack of goddamn wolves ladies it's springtime okay 
and the dusties, the frozen dusties are defrosting, okay? And they're coming out in droves doing what they do. Chicago is already fucked the fuck up. Teenage girls getting shot up out there. It is what it is. Um, can y'all take a look at this for me for a second? And hunt is underway for the fourth suspect wanted in a mass shooting targeting high school students at a SEPTA bus stop. This is the 10 o'clock news. I'm Jason Martinez. I'm Sheba Russell. U.S. Marshals are now offering a reward for the capture of 17 year old Asir Boone. Authorities say he, like the other three. I want you to notice something. Did you notice that? Asir 17 and they showed his face slowly but surely. And I mean, as slow as frozen molasses. All those protections are going away because y'all's kids are getting so violent that it, it's like we we gotta we gotta show his face because we need to catch him. Okay, first and last name, ladies. We are sitting here in the very beginning. I don't even think the official day of spring came yet, but spring is here because it's warming the fuck up in Georgia. They are defro the dusties are defrosting and they're coming out. Please be safe out here. But this one right here is Philadelphia. Let's keep going. Suspects in custody will face attempted murder charges in connection with the shooting. It was one week ago today when eight Northeast High students were gunned down. Steve, police say Boone is considered armed and dangerous. It is a lot better news when you go to the hospital and the homes of the victims because all eight are doing so much better physically. And they're likely doing or feeling a lot better mentally, too, knowing that Philly police here at headquarters are convinced they know who did this. These are the four faces behind the mask, Philadelphia police now say. One week to the day of last Wednesday's horrific mass shooting of eight Northeast high school students waiting in the pouring rain at a SEPTA bus stop. Since then, it's police who poured on the investigative work and now have three of the four suspects in custody, two of them with staggering size bails of $16 million each. But the focus tonight is on the fourth suspect, not in custody yet. I want y'all to remember that th this moment right here, okay? Mock my words, because they always come true, pull up. At some point in the future, you're going to see 12-year-old mugshots, 8-year-old mugshots, 10-year-old mugshots. This one is considered, I guess, an adult now, 17, I don't know. But ladies, they are so tired of black folk. They like, fuck it. Show, how old is he? Fuck it. Just go ahead and show it. Ladies, they so damn violent. And with all of these stores closing, I don't know if y'all know, there are over $1,000 tree and family dollars that's getting ready to close the fuck down. And all these places where black people congregate is becoming food deserts and they're becoming riddled with violence. If you still on the fence, fuck you at this point. I usually encourage you to get off that fence, but this time I'm going to ask you to twerk on it and fuck yourself with it. Why? Because you need to know that this is some bullshit right here. Anybody that's still on the fence, go ahead and stay your ass up there and then lift the other leg over to the side and get back on that Blackistani side, please. I, I agree. And I just wanted to add one thing earlier to, to piggyback off something that Mistress Rogue was saying. I, here's the thing, because I hear a lot of talk about, you know, Black people defending themselves. This is just self-defense. That is just self-defense. But see, here's the thing. What y'all got to know about that, there is a such thing called mutual combat. However, what you need to know about that is there is a difference between an accident and a crime. When you deliberately do something to try to permanently harm the other participant, then it becomes a crime. If you have an opponent down and they have surrendered and you still keep hitting them or kicking them, at that point, you can no longer claim that it was an accident. And then at, at a minimum, you could be charged with manslaughter. And at worst, it will be murder. So you cannot use self-defense as a charge because I'm tired of people erroneously using self the self-defense, stand your ground and all this other shit. And you thinking that that's going to give you a license to kill people while you're Run being alive, recorded. Girl, that's, that's number I'm, four. I'm, so <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Unalive people <laughs> while you're being recorded. And I'm sorry, but that's just not the way the law works. I hate to break that to y'all. I just thought you should know that. Yeah, the law outlines it being within reasonable force. So if she's on, if a person is on the ground, you're still kicking them, but you've already won. Reasonable force has been met. You've exceeded it if you killed them. I mean, unalive them. Damn, I said it too. You unalive them. Ladies, 
I want y'all, and I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to show it. I want y'all to look up um, the new bill that passed in Arizona. Oh my goodness. It's such a sweetheart bill. With those cash flow doctrines and the stand your ground situation, they've expanded it to the yard. Okay. You don't have to wait until they actually try to come into your house. They touch one blade of your grass. You can send them to the underworld. Okay. And there's a lot of people upset about that. Y'all got to follow these laws. I know they're boring. I'm, I'm not even going to deny that. It's boring as hell, but it has a lot to do with you. So if you're just cutting across somebody's grass to get home, right, just doing a shortcut, you can be taken the fuck out. They want you so far away from them that if you are an acre away from their ass and you see them, they can snipe your ass down, pull up. Okay? Y'all better check that out over there in uh, Arizona because that's going to spread. Okay. And I promised T that I would tell everybody about the DC situation. They have gone ahead and passed a bill there. That's going to give the police a lot more rights when it comes to you. And they're collecting DNA when you do a violent crime so that they can keep you in CODIS. So whenever you do anything up to and including petty theft, you're going to be caught because it's getting ridiculous. OK, they are constructing a actual kitty jail in two states right now. It's not juvenile detention and it's not um, grown man jail. Right. It's something that's a mixture of in between because it's hard to keep, you know, unalivers in the same place where somebody was just simply doing graffiti or vandalizing or stuff like that. But I told y'all that they are going to get this shit in check and it's going to be on and goddamn it popping. And to be honest with you, ladies, I can't wait. I can't wait. Aren't they pushing legislation to um, make it more easily accessible to states? So like when victims that are like, when people, perpetrators are like 15 to 17 do violent crimes, they're automatically charged as adults. I thought I read that somewhere. Yeah. In Georgia, 16 and up can get oh, okay, grown that's man. Right, right. Yeah. They get grown <laughs> man. They need to do that in all 50 states. These little motherfuckers. I love Georgia. See, Atlanta and Georgia is two different places. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I passed through there. I was like, this is ghetto. <laughs> R.I.P. Y'all going to be remembering some of y'all friends this summer. Let's go. Tonight, reaction is pouring in after police arrested the man they say killed a beloved teacher. We've been covering the case of Joy Brown since she was shot last summer during a domestic violence situation. Arkana Patterson is here with more. Yes, friends of Joy Brown say they are reliving this tragedy all over again. They say they will continue to call for justice while keeping her love of family and her students alive. The heartache for Joy Brown continues. To me, it's still just beginning all over again. Her friend group leaning on Mammies. All of them. All of them. You see the black power on them? I don't know none of these bitches. But do you see the black power on them? Do you see the um white bitches can't wear dreads on them do you see the but white people have been oppressing us all this time let me tell you what a good friend is to miss joy brown telling her "Ooh, that nigga ain't shit you might want to step away um and i'm gonna put a hiatus on me and you going places together because i'm afraid of your dude that's a friend right there you're willing to break your friend's heart so that so that she can live god damn it i'm not going to lament this woman I'm a, and I'm going to stop lamenting a lot of these women. I hate that it happens to them, but the information is out there and that some of this information is getting stale as fuck. Nobody that's in a relationship with a black man right now as we speak don't know the history on um, black femicide, uh, black men's domestic abuse of black women and so on and so forth. They don't they know it, but they're choosing keyword choosing to stay there. Ladies, this was domestic violence, okay? And I don't care how tough you think you are and what you believe in gender politics or whatever, they will body you, okay? I don't care what you identify as or whatever, a man can body a woman, okay? And black men do not like black women. I'm going to pound that shit through y'all's skull. I don't give a fuck how angry you get at me. They don't. Pretty girl, but she caught it too. Let's go. ...on each other since she was found dead inside of her home on Wendell Drive last June. Every day I still have to get up. I still have to look at the shell of a house. Court records and text messages from Brown show years of abuse at the hands of her on and off again boyfriend, Calvin Jackson. But she was beautiful, you know what I'm saying? And I, I don't think um, in that situation that she was in, um, he hid her from that, you know what I'm saying? He wanted to keep her in that shell. New court documents show Brown was found shot in the head, face up, in her bedroom, 
with a gun near her feet. Jackson was also shot in the head nearby. A month after the shooting, police were granted a search warrant to collect evidence to match DNA from the crime scene to Jackson. For a minute, I, I felt like there, nothing's going to happen. Eight months after the shooting, Jackson is behind bars. There he is. Can I ask you something, Black women? And I wish one of my cloud watchers would hit the link. Why is it that y'all hate white folks so much and y'all get in these relationships with these monsters and then you start uh, criticizing law enforcement for how slow they're moving to clean up your motherfucking funky ass mess? I got questions. They get to it when they get to it. You get into your divestment until you get to it, right? Everybody doing their thing on their own time. Let law enforcement do what they do. You know these niggas are dusty. That woman said on again, off again. Why did you break up with them the first time? Yeah, that part. But I you went back. Yes, ma'am. It said that he was trying to unalive himself. How is it they failed at everything? Mm -hmm. They never that fail part. at fucking you up, but they always fail at fucking themselves up. And I have a problem with that. That in of itself should show you, Black women, that they are complete and abject failures to humanity. I don't even want to hear anything else about this woman because I feel like I've heard this story a million times. You but have. I I, quite frankly, I'm apathetic to the entire situation. May she rest in peace. But at this point, we have to acknowledge that she chose this path. Hmm. Right, right, Egypt. Always talking about defunding the damn police. But then you want them to operate on big budget shit when it's your crime that's going to have to be investigated. That's not how this shit works. Whenever you loving and sucking and all this shit, we going to what? What, what black people think fancy? Applebee's? I, I don't know. You're going somewhere to get some ribs. I guess. I don't know what you need. Carnival do. Cruise. Well, wait, but y'all can't do that no more because they don't, don't allow twerking or fighting. Or they anything. ain't going to believe you when you say that. What they don't allow on Car Carnival Cruise no more? Carnival Cruise's new policy does not allow for twerking. It does not allow hey! for fighting. It does not allow for... <laughs> they have like rolled out a whole policy. I know because my sisters and I were looking at taking a cruise. <laughs> and it's a shame. They even had to include that part. They did. Ladies, you can look it up. Everything, nothing we say up here is hyperbolic. Carnival Cruise got called the Spirit Airlines of the Seas, and that's when they made that policy. Because every time, listen, ladies, anybody that accepts Groupon um, for vacation, don't use it. Because <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God, I didn't I know mean, they I did that. I just don't know when does the shame kick in. Because it was a group of women standing around making fun of this Indian lady that I, that we work with on the job talking about this lady clothes and everything so I'm just standing here just looking while they just talking and I said one thing one important thing that y'all seen to forget why y'all talking about this lady clothes yeah she come from a culture where women actually wear clothes mm -hmm. they got offended by that I don't give a fuck though ask me if I care so that's the thing, black women got you keep at you you keep putting shit out there and talking about shit. The, nobody else's community and culture is priding themselves and running around naked all the fucking time with all they shit hanging out. That would be y'all. <laughs> I can't. The the fact that I'm imagining the uh, CEO of Carnival typing the word twerking, I'm tickled. Okay, I, I'm tickled. But anyway, I don't mean to come off harsh. I'm just, I, feelings got to go. Ladies, no decision should ever be made when you're in your feelings, okay? Going back to a nigga because, first of all, don't get with niggas. Don't get with niggas! Now, like I was saying, anything made while you're feeling emotional, right? You're feeling like you're blushing or angry, any of those emotions, you should not be making decisions at that time because usually you're going to make the wrong decision. Why? Because that decision is based on feelings and decisions should be made off facts and logic. And that's it. And that's fucking all. But going back to a nigga, I really cannot feel sorry for you because you left them for a reason. Now, how about you don't, don't get with them in the first place for a reason? These people are animals for those that don't like when I say that right? They're animals. How do animals operate? They operate off animalistic goddamn instinct. Whatever's going to make them feel good at the time or feel vindicated at the time or get rid of their hunger at the time, that's what they're going to do. That's why you see them knocking over old ladies, punching their grandma in the face. That was on the last live too. That shit was disgusting. Doing all sorts of shit because they emotional and animal animalistic. Point blank the fuck period. Oh, ladies, I am so damn tired. Let me check my back. Oh, Lord, that nigga's still back there. Yeah, I ought to share I mean, my screen. Just keep running his mouth. I don't know. Stalker. What the fuck is wrong with you? 
every he every time you say pull up, I, I just, I'm glad you mentioned that. Fuck nigga, she ain't talking to you. Every time she say pull up, that don't mean you, bitch. Ain't nobody so we don't want to talk to you. Why the fuck is he here and not at work? You gotta be the most unemployed motherfucker I have ever met in my goddamn life. Sir, get a goddamn job and not a hobby. Y'all always want to be in the midst of women because you a bunch of bitches. Ain't you got a dick to suck somewhere? Should you, <laughs> you be swinging around a white man's cock? I know I'm gonna do that a little bit later. Maybe you should too. try it. <laughs> I mean, he always, I guess the, the more he think he dares DZ, so you cannot double dog dare us, okay? Our, the, the IQs up on this panel is much higher than that. To, he stay by, backstage trying to talk shit. I guess he think if he double dog dare you to let him up on the panel, you will let him up on the panel. Every time DZ say pull up, he backstage making comments. Uh, you don't want nobody to pull up for real. Why are you keeping me backstage? Bitch, this ain't a conversation that you were invited to. Mm daring me really i i don't even view you as human you know it's not i know puppies right i've seen puppies that have more logic and common sense than you black males i wish you would leave me alone i really do Fun I, fact. <laughs> women are the I, reason. I can't Women are the, actually the reason that dogs are actually the domesticated the way they are because they're the ones that invited them into the familiar unit they found through historical accounts. So even dogs are more valuable than your fucking presence. You got you like a ball on my ass cheek. I wish you would fucking fall off earth. Check it. People like the person that's in my backstage, right? This is why this happened. We also begin in Oakland, where yet another restaurant chain is going to extreme lengths to keep staff and customers safe. Good evening. I'm Elizabeth Cook. Several Taco Bell locations in the city are now closing their dining rooms and switching to drive through only. Our John Ramos looks into the problems prompting the change. This Taco Bell on 35th Avenue in Oakland has been robbed four times since November. The owners of the franchise have decided that enough is enough. Plywood still covers the window from three weeks ago when robbers used a pickup truck and cable to steal a safe from the Taco Bell at 35th and MacArthur. Of the four robberies the store has endured in as many months, two of them occurred when the restaurant was open for business. Kimberly Garibe works at the Metro Wireless store across the street. They just pull up out of nowhere and it's not like it's only their robbers. I want y'all to catch the accent because you're being replaced. They just pull up out of nowhere. Hey, that's going to be the new Democrats. Y'all better get y'all life together. Get over to the Republican side. There, I said it. They just pull up out of nowhere. Yup, just like they do in my backstage, huh? Dining room closed. Of the store, they brought everybody in there as well. So it's, it's not as safe as how it used to be. It's a lot of crime now. With that in mind, the owner of the franchise, a company called Diversified Restaurant Group, has closed the dining rooms at all four of their Taco Bells in Oakland, including this one on a crime-ridden section of Hagenberger Road. That leaves a Taco Bell on Telegraph, owned by another company, as the only place people can eat indoors. And that restaurant has gone cashless to try to prevent robberies. I'm going to stop that right there. That news report is crazy as hell, right? It's crazy as fuck. Don't think I didn't see that EBT flag waving. That right there, that, that might as well be a crime warning flag when people accept EBT, huh? That's another thing that's going away in certain private grocery stores, huh? You're not going to be able to spend government funds in there. Y'all going to see. Y'all going to see exactly what's going on, and I'm going to enjoy every second of it. Jesus. But places are having to go cashless because you keep coming in there knocking their head off. Kind of like this nigga that's in my backstage. Just pulling up where you ain't wanted. Go ahead, Mr. Stroke. He back there talking about if you scared, say you scared. I'm childish. sorry. I told you. Just childish. If you scared, say you scared. Sir, oh, you're too on. stupid to Jedi mind trick. I realize you're trying to utilize reverse psychology, but do you understand there's a way and means of doing it? Of course you don't. You're a nig -nog. Anyway, oh, DZ, yeah. I might be a sadist for saying this, but I thoroughly love watching all these businesses close around these niggas. Me too. I like watching niggas starve. I like watching nigger and cry. I like, I like like watching these niggas get replaced because that's what they wanted. Girl. Maybe I'm a little sick, but I'm thoroughly enjoying You ain't this sick because the other night, Mr. Shrug, the other night, you ain't sick. Let me tell you why. After they did that Nature Boy, um, what is it called? The verdict, right? Where he they did the verdict and then they did the sentencing. That's what it's called. And <laughs> he 
his wives was crying because the prison cut all his uh hair off right and the bitch started crying talking about oh they cut his antennas ladies <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. Soundbite. Oh I thoroughly God. enjoy watching you niggas suffer. Oh take that's God. your soundbite right there. Look, I need to I need to crop that and use that, you know. But ladies, come on now. I used that shit to fall asleep. I was they was back there crying, literally crying. I cut that shit on my uh, YouTube on my TV, and I fell asleep to that shit because your tears. <laughs> no, you did it. You did it. <laughs> your tears are very soothing to me because somebody done told you already that that community is fucked up. Your tears used to make me cry with you. I ain't gonna lie. I used to cry with y'all every time I seen one of y'all hurt. I'm like, oh my god, another black woman got fucked up. But then when you tried to put your foot on my neck. Okay, good. Now your tears are soothing. It's like an ambiance for me because we said this shit was coming. Cry all you want to, or option B, you can divest. You can to divest. To be honest with you, I'm indifferent to it. I mean, either way, I'm asleep good tonight. So I'm so V and training. V and training. That's what she said. You know how whole tabs do. Uh, our hair shoots up to the sky. We're the only race of people who hair points up to the sun. It's like an antenna. You ain't never heard one of them dusty fucks say that shit. That's his antennas, girl. I fell the fuck out. Huh? Anyways, ladies, I think we have thoroughly roasted the black community. And don't you take your ass nowhere because I'm getting ready to make you laugh. Every sector of the black community is trash. There's no production there. You're not going to be able to get any help there. Actually, you're going to be fucked up there, to be honest with you, in more ways than one. Y'all still in each other's purses, ladies. I've seen a lot of reports of y'all still in each other's purses. Huh? You're getting real fucking hungry. You're going in places stealing little things like grapes. Okay? I am an assessor. I am. Okay? I learned how to assess way back in nursing school from head to fucking toe because it prevents lawsuits. If you mark down all the bruises, abrasions or whatever that they came in with, they can't then leave the hospital and say that that happened when they got there or you did that to them. But I'm, I'm noticing the type of stuff that y'all stealing. Okay. Soap, laundry detergent, day-to-day -day stuff that you need. That's really not that expensive. That's how I know you're suffering. OK, so make a plan and get away from the black community. Dead ass serious. I put together three videos and they're very, very short. The totality of the time is 40 seconds, I want to say. It paints a really good picture of who you're dealing with when you don't leave the black community. Let's get it. So that's my baby daddy. And I'm going to get in the bed with my baby daddy. You hear what I'm saying? I don't know who else baby daddy is, but I know he is my baby daddy. Look, I don't like I don't like niggas. We fucking the fuck around. I don't like niggas. I just tapped that nigga. Y'all, uh, y'all, would you do it again? I ain't gonna lie. Me making my decision, nigga, that's like the same way you made the decision to crack a bad bitch or like to crack a hoe. I made the decision What's to crack a nigga. Oh, mm -hmm. Gee, shut the fuck Jack. I don't know. Like, hey, shit, money good. I'm cracking shit. You oh, shit. Y'all can laugh all y'all want. I'm about to get up off this lie. I gotta wash my coochie. I got things I gotta do. Ooh. Yeah. Baby, I feel like I could smell those lives. Ugh, God. Smell like rancid ass My and disappointment. Oh, my God. What? Look, y'all. Look, I'm a conservative, right? And I'm of the firm belief that there's a yin and a yang, a masculine and a feminine. Because these niggas is getting so feminine, these bitches getting rough. That girl said, I gotta wash my coochie. I'm like, oh shit, it has a coochie. I can't. Y'all leave these people alone. They hungry. They don't know who they are. They don't know where they're going. They're violent. They're emotional. They and all over the damn place. They have a coochie. Girl. <laughs> they can't see. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, these bitches swear they dudes. That's the reason why I ain't. I am not engaging in hand to hand combat with black women these days. These bitches scary. I'm afraid. You look, avoid the, avoid them, y'all. Avoid them. Seriously. They think they a lot of these bitches think they are niggas now. I swear they do. They do. And they operate in just like them. Same mindset, same everything. There's better out there. And I hope y'all have an amazing weekend. Mistress Rogue, get your ass in Discord. Aaliyah, get your ass in the inbox. And the rest of y'all, please be safe. All right. Talk to y'all next time. Love Bye.
gotta wash my coochie. My coochie. Ah! <laughs>